Welcome. In front is a Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra, and today I'll show you several tweaks and tricks you can do on this device. Now, starting off, we're going to begin with the Advan, uh, Adaptive Refresh Rate, which basically allows you to um, change the refresh rate of the device. Now, by default, it is set to uh, the Adaptive version of it, uh, which changes the refresh rate automatically, so you don't actually have to do anything. And in other words, so when you're, for instance, in a content that uh, can use high refresh rate to make it look smoother, for instance, like uh, right here. Uh, now, bear with me. Um, this won't be very visible on the uh, camera just because the camera is recording at 60 uh, frames while this is running at 120 and anything past the 60 is just kind of lost for the camera. Uh, but if you have the device, you can check it out yourself. So by default with the adaptive one, when you scroll up and down, you will have the high refresh rate, uh, but then when you're not doing anything, it will drop the refresh rate to like 60, sometimes even 40, uh, which uh, in normal circumstances it would look a little bit atrocious uh, at 40. Uh, but then when you're looking at pictures, stuff like that, it, it doesn't really matter at that point. Um, now, if for you, as an example, you don't really see any difference between it, uh, between 60 uh, and 120, then it's probably going to be more beneficial for you to drop it to 60 and have it locked to that frame rate. Uh, because whenever the device is running at higher refresh rates, like 120, it will consume a little bit more battery. It needs to basically uh, do a little bit more processing power in the background to do that. So what you want to do is go under the display in the settings and find the uh, motion smoothness and then change it to standard. Now, when you change it to standard, it will become this kind of a little bit more choppy image. At least that's how I see it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go back to the adaptive because I personally do see a difference and I prefer it that way. Now moving on to the next option, it's just going to be the dark mode, uh, which you can simply access quickly in the notification panel, dark mode, click on that and voila, it changes into dark. Now this will also persist into the default application, so messages, phone, uh, well not camera, camera is already dark, um, Google, uh, photos, settings. So basically everything will be changed into dark mode. Now. Outside of it being well, dark as it is, it also has an additional benefit which isn't really stated anywhere because this device is using a uh, AMOLED display and the pixels uh, are self-lit. So anything that is fully black, like the area right here, uh, the ones like between the screen or between like the options is fully black. So those pixels aren't actually lit up. They're basically completely off right now. And because they're off, they're gonna consume obviously less power, meaning that your battery will last a little bit longer. Now, that being said, the battery gain from this is nothing significant. It's maybe gonna be an hour at max, so just keep that in mind. But it's there, and I thought it would be worth mentioning. Now, moving on to the next one, that's gonna be more for the uh, visually impaired people, and it is the easy mode. Now, we can find it again under the settings, display, right here and then let's scroll down and we should see easy mode right over here and as you can see it gives you a little bit of a visual image on how it's going to change the uh, overall aesthetic of the device but when you enable it pay attention to the text it now became super huge you also have a touch and hold delay and uh, this is i believe for like the for uh, the voice assistant or navigation um but yeah when you leave it you can see that this is the settings uh well, not the settings, the main uh, homepage, which uh, has now these gigantic icons, like I said, for for easier accessibility for those people that would struggle with the tiny ones. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, everything is now huge, uh, including text. If you go into the settings, everything here is enlarged as well. So yeah, I'm gonna go back to the uh, normal normal mode because for me it's a little bit confusing and when it's bigger everything is placed in different different areas than I would be expecting it so it does mess with me a little bit so where was it there we go easy mode so I'm gonna disable it right now and go back to the normal there we go so moving on to the next thing it's gonna be the game launcher and this is strictly for people that like to play games uh, but Let's say that they might not really want to also have the uh, apps on well, their home screen or 
for instance, Uptrade. And also I want to gain a little bit of a, a, a benefit from using the launcher itself. So Samsung does come with this uh, application called, called Game Launcher. If I can actually find it, there we go, Game Launcher. And from here, let's just agree to whatever pops up. There we go. And from the application, uh, as you can see, we have just kind of several information right here. You can go to the Galaxy Store, you can pull up, and normally here you would see all the games that you have installed on your device. For me, that's basically zero because I don't have anything installed here. Uh, now, outside of that, you also have the option to go into the settings as an example here and do things like hide. Uh, so here we go, show game apps, and you can show them only in the game launcher, which will remove them from your home screen and also from your app tray. And they would only be accessible through the game launcher uh, and here, making your device a little bit cleaner. Now, apart from that, you do have also certain uh, settings associated with uh, performance along with, uh, let's see, where is it? Uh, along with uh, just notifications in general, how the device gives you notifications uh, when you're playing games. Now, this will only apply if you launch the games uh, through the game launcher, so just remember that. So right here, we can disable notifications, I believe, um, or mute them. Uh, we have also, let's see, here we have some game notifications. So it looks like the game launcher will remove the game notifications uh, from just like right here and only keep them in, in the game launcher, which is, I would say, really nice. I personally hate when the game just starts spamming you with uh, notifications for no reason. But you can go around the game launcher and check out different settings. Uh, it's, a, it's worth checking out, I would say. Now, moving on to the next option, it's going to be the video enhancer. Uh, so this will be strictly for the video applications. Um, by default, there's, I believe, three applications here that will qualify for this option. Now, again, it's going to be under the display section and it's, I think, under display. No, it's actually my bad. It's under advanced features. So let's scroll down, advanced features. And here we should have video enhancer somewhere. There we go, video enhancer. As you can see, there's a toggle for it, so you can tap on it to enable it, but you can also tap on the uh, word itself and it will take you to, uh, to the video enhancer option where you can actually see the difference uh, that it will make to the overall image quality. So here is the image example and when you enable it, as you can see, it becomes a little bit brighter and the shadows are a little bit more visible, making it also a little bit less vibrant. But overally, the clarity is improved in my opinion. Now, as you can see, it does include four different apps that it supports right off the bat that are in, well, basically installed on the device from the get-go. Now, if you would install more apps on here, uh, you would have to probably check them on. Uh, so, as you can see, basically, you see them like this and then you have to just turn them on. So, they would be included in the video enhancer option. Now, moving on to the next option, it's going to be the pop-up view. And there is an easy way to access it. Uh, there is two ways, uh, actually, but... I'm going to show off the first one, which is by the panel that is on the side. If I can actually grab it. If... There we go. So yeah, uh, once you grab it from the side, I'm not sure if it's visible on the camera. It is barely visible. Maybe if I cover it, you can see it starting off here, going down. So if you grab that, it will pull out the panel. And from here, you have a bunch of applications. You can tap basically on every app that is on your phone, scroll through it. Um, you can grab any kind of application from here. So you just grab it and whoop, drag it over and now it's in pop-up view. Now from here, you can, for instance, minimize it like so, make it super small. If you go home, it's gonna minimize it into an app head. Um, again, you can tap on it to enlarge it and it's fully usable. And you can also tap on the blue bar or um, it is grayish, but if you interact with the window, if you make it full, oh well, the main priority is going to be blue. So you, won't, you can tap on that and from here you can minimize it into this, uh, again, up head. Or you can also maximize it to be full screen. So yeah. And also there was a close option with the X. Now, while I was already on this uh, side panel, uh, the other option, the other thing that I want to show is just the side panel itself. So if I grab it and pull it out right here. Uh, it does come by default with only the apps page, right? But we can tap on the settings icon and this will give us option to add more panels to it, uh, increasing its well, usability. So right here we have things like live messages, people, uh, smart select task, weather tools, reminders, clipboard. 
So these are the default ones that come with the device, uh, plus there is more under the Galaxy Store, although some of the better ones will be paid, so keep that in mind. Uh, the price of them I, does vary uh, between the creator, but it's somewhere I believe in like a dollar or three dollars. Uh, and if something uh, is there that would really interest you, I guess it might be worth uh, just dropping a dollar or so for it. But anyway, I'm going to add a couple of the ones that are already existing in here. There we go. So once I leave it, can I get pull out the panel now? There we go. And from here you can swipe across it to access the different panels now. Giving you a little bit more accessibility. And this panel will be accessible basically anywhere you are. As you can see, you can get it from any kind of application. Now, moving on to the next option, it's going to be the gesture navigation. And this is going to be strictly uh, to make the device cleaner and easier to use. Uh, also make it join the 2020 year and above uh, for the gestures. Uh, because let's be honest, not personally, I just hate the buttons that are at the bottom. Uh, they, they feel super outdated. And the uh, back, uh, if you want to go back, you have to press the button. It is honestly it didn't age too well so things like gesture navigation where you can swipe from uh, the edges of the display to go back as a way better way of navigating through a device i'm going to quickly go over it once i enable it so let's go into the settings from here we're going to go again into the display i believe it's somewhere at the bottom navigation bar there we go and all you need to do is select the swipe gestures and there we go so by default, if you swipe from the side, it will go back. You can see that there is an arrow appearing from either side. So this is basically a back gesture. Uh, you have a home gesture, which is swipe up. If you do it quickly, there we go. And then also swipe up and hold will take you uh, into recent applications. Now I'll also mention if you have some kind of thick glass on the display and it is not necessarily designed for the uh, the screen as for instance, the glass that I have right now on, as you can see, it kind of ends uh, prematurely on the display, not really covering it uh, entirely. Uh, the gestures are a little bit wonky because your finger kind of does catch on the edge itself, which isn't necessarily the best kind of feeling. Uh, but if you have a better glass or none at all, uh, this will be way better in terms of like how it reacts to it. And also, if you never use gesture navigation, you might be inclined to try to go home by swiping up uh, like this all on the screen. This won't be necessarily the best way of actually using the navigation. So if you want to have the best uh, use, well, experience with it uh, to use gestures, uh, what you want to do is swipe basically off the screen. So as you can see, my finger is off of the screen, literally. And then you want to swipe up. When you do that, uh, the gesture will basically almost always react correctly as it's supposed to. And same goes for uh, for like the back and the recent option. So if you try to swipe from the side, now again, the protection here makes it really hard. Uh, actually, I don't really have anything to swipe back from, so let's start with that. But as you can see, it does work well. And uh, yeah, so if you found this video helpful, because that will conclude all the tweaks that I want to share, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.